Ew, gotta get rid of this old Backstreet Boys t-shirt. Tell me why. Because it stinks, boys. Tell me why. I've washed it so many times, but the odor won't come out. Tell me why. No, you tell me why I can't get rid of this odor. Have you tried Downy Rinse and Refresh? It doesn't just cover up odors. It helps remove them. Wow, it worked, guys. Yeah. Downy Rinse and Refresh removes more odor in one wash than the leading value detergent in three washes. Find it wherever you buy laundry products. LinkedIn presents. Welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast, where your source for personal, professional, and organizational growth and development, where we share original research, explore industry trends, and interview executives and thought leaders from across the globe. We hope you join us often for practitioner-oriented content around all things related to leadership, HR, talent management, organizational development, and change management. Maximize your personal and organizational potential with Human Capital Innovations Podcast. Do you enjoy the Human Capital Innovations Podcast? Enjoy ad-free listening by going to the Patreon page, and please consider contributing even at the producer or sponsorship level. And please leave a review. Thank you for your support. Welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. In this HCI podcast episode, I talk with Mara Kotsky about how leaders of sales teams should approach retention differently amidst changing employee expectations. Maura Kotsky, welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. Thank you. Glad to be here. It is a pleasure to be with you. You're joining us from Indianapolis area. I'm south of Salt Lake City. And today we're going to be talking about how leaders of sales teams should approach retention differently amidst changing employee expectations. You have a lot of insights in this area. I'm really excited to explore this with you. And and I appreciate you taking time out of your busy day to share your insights with me and the audience. Maura Kotsky is the president of Sales Acceleration. She has 20 years of experience in the marketing industry and has helped companies build and grow their brands, creating meaningful customer relationships and implementing practices that have resulted in increased client retention, all of which of course is so important. It's a pleasure again to be with you. Anything else that you would like to highlight by way of your background or personal context before we dive on into the conversation? Yeah, I think that, thank you for asking. So, you know, just a little level setting here. So, you know, one of the things we talk about sales and marketing, those terms are used ambiguous. Really there's sales as a core competency in marketing. We'll talk a little bit about how they're coming together, but a lot of my insights that I'll share today too, are not just mine, but from, we have 180 advisors that do our work. And so just what we've learned collectively as a group. So I didn't want to think that everything I'm sharing with you today is just my insights. It's from really a larger group of people. Yeah. Well, that's, that's great. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. All right. So why don't we start by just laying the groundwork? You know, I already mentioned changing employee, employee expectations, but why, why are those employee expectations, expectations shifting? You know, obviously we've gone through a COVID period. Uh, We, you know, we've been dealing with high inflation uh, concerns about a recession. So there's geopolitical and socioeconomic upheaval the last several years, Mm -hmm. like all these things have been creating this context that has um, one of the outcomes has been a shift in how organizations function, how work is designed, how employees think about their work and expectations around work. Um, How, how do you see from your uh, standpoint, how all of this has been impacting uh, employee expectations and ultimately impacting, you know, high turnover uh, in sales roles? Yeah. You know, it, it's really fascinating. If you kind of look at our workforce today, so we have, you know, generation X, generation Y, we have now we're using more international staffing, we're using gig workers. So we just really have a new foundation of really who is in the sales world. And so, but you have to look at each one of them individually of what they want and what they need. And I think this is where a, company, a lot of companies fall down, right? They try to one stop, put you in there. So if you look at like, 
Generation X, they really want security. They're going to work, a little, you know, they're going to put in the, you know, 60 hour work weeks. And then when you get to our Generation Y behind it, they don't want to be watching the time clock. They want to be working for organizations that value them to get out and do more things. And you have your gig workers and they're, you hire them for a portion of time and deliver a result and they don't care about the rest of it. Right. So companies have to start really putting um, different hats on when they're really looking at the collective of what they need to do to really build a, a solid sales team and really define um, things that are going to motivate each all those different. And there's more, like I said, people are now starting to use more international and then technology is playing such a big part of it today too. So um, that's really what we're seeing is the lack of employees really and em- employers really understanding to really take a look at your employees at a much more personalized level. You know, that's the way of the future in, in just like sales and marketing is personalization. We're not bringing that into really managing our employees. And so with that, they, you have a higher rate of turnover and exiting mm-hmm. because you're not looking at, it's not the days now of people going into an office and let's have fun and let's bring in the ping yeah. pong tables, right? My generation, we wouldn't want that. <laughs> so it's like, no, I, I'm not interested in that. Um, and so they, they have, it's really requiring a lot of stepping back and looking at the type of employees. Yeah. Yeah. Wonderful. And yeah, it really does. You've highlighted the need for every organization, for every leader, for every team lead, uh, regardless of the type of team lead, right? Like you need mm-hmm. to know your people. You need to understand that different people have different um, wants, desires. Some of that's generational. Some of that's, you know, just life stage or just yeah. personal preference. Like, you know, we're not a monolith. And so not all Gen Xers want one thing. Not all millennials want one thing. Not all baby boomers or Gen uh, Xers want one thing. And so we just know our people. That's a really important first step. And then having the ability to provide some form of flexibility around how, mm-hmm you interact with them and how their work is designed um, is going to go a long way uh, for people who, who might even shift their own preferences over time. I think there's been interesting research just to look at how preferences around face-to-face versus remote versus hybrid work has shifted Mm -hmm. over the last three years. A lot of people really didn't want to go remote during the pandemic. And in those early days, you know, there were surveys um, showing how, how frustrated people were with that six months later, a lot of those people who were resistant actually fell in love with it. Um, Now I think, you know, flexibility is the name of the game. Hybrid's the name of the game. And, Mm -hmm. and, and just, you know, that, that's the way more organizations have gone about it, but you know, just, we, we have to lean into that um, or we're going to continue to have to experience high levels of turnover. Now, some of this, you know, the great resignation is the main term that people started to use a couple of years ago, lots of variations of the great resignation, the great reawakening, uh, et cetera. All of this, I think, comes back to just the fact that expectations have been shifting. Um, My, my personal, my personal priorities, my self-evaluation of my career, you know, those types of things have been shifting. Um, How has this impacted specifically within the sales industry? Um, what sales roles, uh, sales careers, trajectories, what, what, how has that been shifting and changing over the last few years? Yeah. So, you know, sales roles are going backwards. There's been a lot of articles published on it. And, you know, it's interesting. Sales roles used to be driven by you know, the turnover was really company driven, right? If you're not meeting your metrics and everything, you're out. And now it's really being driven by the employee wanting, like we talked about that more well-rounded, you know, supporting of lifestyle, working remote, going in, you know, person. Most importantly, they're really wanting to be paid for what they feel like they're contributing. And it's amazing how many companies, because we deal with, you know, small to mid-sized businesses, really are not compensating for the right behaviors. And the the generation that's now in the workplace today is wanting to get paid for that. They're like, mm-hmm. I'm driving the revenue. I'm seeing the bottom line impact. I don't just want a salary and a little bit of money. I want to be able to grow as the organization grows, not really be capped that much and really get paid for the value and the performance I'm bringing. And it's a real mind shift for um, a lot of companies to think that way. You know, it's really a a modeling exercise for them to understand what are you willing to pay, right? And so it's really what we're seeing a lot of is really making sure you're, you're comping accordingly. And then on top of that, 
is your culture living up to it? If you're just a, a, an organization that's every day going, how many phone calls did you make? What did you do? Instead of getting to know the employee, learning more about them, um, really expressing the key things they need to do. And then most importantly is training and what I call reskilling. It's amazing too what we find is probably 90% of companies don't really train people when they come on board. They just kind of like throw you to the wolves and, you know, maybe we'll have a, here's how to use the computer, but it's really getting people, people want now and expect to understand the products, the services, the values, what's that unique value selling proposition, you know, give me the tools that I need to be successful for you. And we're, we're seeing too many companies still not doing that. And if they do, they're not doing it well. Um, and so we really see a big surge in people that are looking for new jobs, asking in the sales world questions about what is your training? What is your upskilling? How are you going to keep me fresh? How fresh are you keeping your products and services? They also want to make sure that the world of incremental change is gone. It's rapid change. And people yeah. want to join companies that they see are really rapidly changing. So these are the types of things we see people looking for. And if a company can't answer that or provide that to their their existing employees, then they are seeing a much higher turnover. And I know right now with fears of recession and, and high in- mm-hmm. inflation and, and those sorts of things on top of all the other turmoil that's been happening over the last few years, uh, there, there continues to be this concern uh, about uh, what the labor market looks like. It's, it's been a buyer's market, you know, like for, for employees, they've had their options and, and they, they can do, uh, they can choose where they want to be and how they want to work largely over the last couple of years. It'll be interesting to see if that stays that way, or if, if it shifts. Um, I do think that we, we continue, even though we see lots of tech layoffs, for example, we continue Mm -hmm. to see huge uh, labor shortages in certain uh, professional career paths and especially in STEM in healthcare mm-hmm. and in other areas with technological kinds of uh, backgrounds, uh, there's still continues to be shortages regardless of layoffs. And, and a lot of those tech sector people that have been laid off from the big companies have been snatched up by other companies already. Um, so it, it's interesting to, to think about how this is all going to play out. What do you think is going to be happening um, within uh, the sales component of the labor force is there going to be a mass exodus looming for sales teams what should sales leaders be looking at you know in terms of red flags uh, that should they should be paying attention to and preparing for as they're as we're moving into the next six months in a year yeah great question so you know what's really interesting is first and foremost they need to be looking at Am I hiring a hunter or a farmer, right? And really understanding clearly what the role is that they need to do, because a lot of people are put in the wrong roles, right? So it starts there, making sure you're putting the right person in the right seat. Do they get it? Do they want it? Are they capable? Those are going to be the right fits. But so many jobs are also vacant, like you were talking about before. And I don't think it's only just, we actually have a recruiting company called Amplify Recruiting that specializes in sales and then professional services. And you are absolutely right. A lot of the professional services, the accounting tracks, the engineers, those are tough jobs to fill. Sales is right behind it. And the main reason why is that companies really um, are not making it clear, like I said, that clarity of what they expect from that employee when they come on board. So there's very high turnover in sales jobs today because they're they're wanting to... um, incentivize the wrong behaviors. It's not what the person signed up for when they got there. They weren't properly trained, you know, going back to that to really be effective. And so it's tough for salespeople to get sticky at jobs and they don't care that they've jumped jobs. So when someone's calling, if you have not fixed those cultural problems mm-hmm. where you're not living your cultural values, supporting what you told them you're going to do, the recruiting process, confidence in the right way, training and upskilling, they're going to pick up that phone call and and run. And so when people feel like, well, they told me they were happy. Well, are you really getting to the root of it? Are, are they really happy? You know, those surveys to employees better understand what they want from you, that ongoing coaching and feedback, this, these generations of all like that ongoing feedback and culture and sales doesn't do a good job at that. They just literally one day you're in and you're out. Like, you know, or if you get fired, it's like, well, you didn't meet the goal. Um, And so it's a job of a lot of people are operating in fear. And so fear you can run from, or you can, you know, get somebody pulls the hatchet on you. And so that's why we're seeing less and less people wanting to go in sales. However, kind of on the flip side of that, 
there's so much happening with technology today that I do think we're going to see a resurgent when really marketing technology and sales really come together. And I call it smarketing because it's smart marketing, right? You've got the marketing people really warming that lead up. Technology is a part of that, continuing that ongoing conversation, getting the right content in front of that buyer. And then I think it's going to eventually eliminate those entry level roles, that BDR, that sales associate, and go to a more seasoned sales professional if you even need a person in it. Um, so it's really more now is the time for that more reskilling and training and getting people excited about where sales is going because there's so many things happening today that that companies are just not able to think that forward because they're right in the mucks. I got to meet my goal, right? And they need to spend the time to really paint that bigger picture for their salespeople and what are they going to do about it within their organization. Yeah. So I guess that starts to get at really my next question around what sales leaders of sales team teams should be doing to approach retention differently. I mean, some of it just sounds like some of the basic things that you would see or hope to see in other types of teams that perhaps yeah. you don't see in, in sales teams as often just the, the basic, you know, onboarding, training, mentoring, coaching, empowering, supporting uh, some of those sorts of things. Are there, maybe you can elaborate on some of those, or if there's other things that you think are really important for leaders of sales teams and how they should be approaching this and working with their teams so that they can attract the great people where you do have that culture and you do hang on to those people. They're not working in fear all the time and ready to bolt at the first sign of danger. Yeah. You know, I think it, it starts with um, really just that one-to-one relationship with the manager, right? What's the old saying? People don't quit companies, they quit bosses. So you've got to self-reflect as a boss, first and foremost, of am I really giving my employees what they need to be successful? It's interesting that as we see sales evolve as a, a career path for people, people have not seen it as a career path in the past. They've seen it as, oh, anybody can do sales. You just need to be outgoing and friendly. And a lot of companies will be like, I hired my neighbor or my boss because he's got a great personality. There is definitely an art and skill to um, sales training or sales, you know, sales, and they need to be trained well. And it, you know that that's true because there's so many large organizations out there like Rain, Sandler, Dale Carnegie. I could go on and on and on. And it goes back to that investing in your people to be successful, that training, up reskilling, upskilling for people. But besides that, it's just the fundamental foundations of sales. It's just recently that colleges and universities are starting to actually offer classes on sales and training on that. So people even understand it as a career choice. I think that's at the root of a lot of people not coming into it because the the definition of sales It's still, it's kind of like, you know, that used car salesman. It's like one of those least trusted jobs, right? But with the evolution of technology, marketing, people are educating themselves better. The salesperson is becoming more and more um, a a valued person in the process. They They want you to come in and validate as a shopper. And so that salesperson really has to look at that being incredible than um, really validating what the people want or asking for for the service to deliver. So those are skills that a lot of salespeople are missing today. And that's things that companies need to work on. So that's just kind of a, a few yeah. of my thoughts. Yeah. Yeah. So helping with that, of course, people want to feel good at their jobs when they mm-hmm. feel like they're being successful. They're more motivated. They're happier, more satisfied. Uh, they're more pleasant to be around. Frankly, you're going to be a more successful salesperson or any job really when, when those things are happening. Uh, and so it seems like a no brainer that that organizations and particularly sales team leads should be focusing on these sorts of things and in helping people to develop these sorts of skills, people will appreciate it. They notice when you're investing in them Mm -hmm. and when you invest in them, it it increases loyalty and commitment to the organization and to the team. Uh, You know, I, I, I think that's, a perfect example of how we can make a, a big difference in terms of retention uh, and and drive more healthy teams, uh, especially in this environment where attitudes around work are changing, uh, yes. where, you know, maybe people aren't wanting to get into sales or don't see it as a career, uh, 
uh, or maybe they do, but maybe they want to do it from more of a uh, contingent kind of gig worker kind of an approach, or I don't know, whatever. Like there's so many mm-hmm. different ways um, people are approaching work nowadays. And, and if we can lean into that uh, and provide them the support to be successful, uh, it, they're going to be more successful. Our teams are going to be more successful. Our organizations are going to be more success- successful. And when, pe- when we have a revolving door, that's just so expensive. Uh, it's yes. so disruptive. Uh, it, it really hinders your ability to to drive the type of outcomes for your organization that you want. And, you know, that's what we're looking for from sales teams. Like we, mm-hmm. we need revenue, we need products and services sold. And, and so we, we want that high level of performance, but you can't always just use the carrot and stick to try to get it. Yeah. You know, another thing that companies need to, to do a better job that really kind of aligns with retention and sales is a lot more transparency. Um, you know, we have CRMs and tools and stuff to track today, but the reporting on it, you know, it, it's a good thing to share with employees profitability of products and services and them understanding what they're selling and what it does to the bottom line. That kind of information should not be hidden anymore. We're past that, you know, cycle in a, an organization. Um, because it's it makes them feel good about it. And then the impact, right? If we're driving sales, that means we're keeping other people's jobs within the organization. And companies don't tend to really talk about the ever-expanding effect of really sales is the top of every business and really being treating and educating those employees on really the impact they make for an organization. It's really unfortunate when we go into companies and there's no transparency, let alone reporting, and they're worried about keeping the doors open tomorrow and when they start to like include their employees in those dialogues of these are the products that really are the most profitable for us. This is what the impact it makes on the organization. It empowers those salespeople and gives them a really new sense of purpose, right? And as we see generations really wanting that sense of purpose, those are things that companies need to start thinking about is full transparency. Yeah, well said. This has been a great conversation. I note the time I need to let you go here in just a minute. So we're going to have to leave it there. But before we wrap things up for today, I wanted to give you a chance to share with the audience how they can connect with you, find out more about your work, your team, and then give us a final word on the topic for today. Yeah. Um, so salesacceleration.com, you can see the spelling behind me. It's sales X C E L E R A T O N. We have 180 advisors throughout the United States. So they're all here to help, you know, do assessments, infrastructure, consult where they're, we're just, we're that gig worker, that that temporary, but, you know, people that really come in and make a difference. And, you know, I think the number one thing I'd love for people to walk away with is really make sure what you're telling anybody that they're coming into, that you're delivering on it. You've got to do the, you know, a litmus test. Are we living our culture? Are we fully transparent? Are we being really clear on the expectations for the job? And are we training those people to be successful? Because nine times out of 10, people leave because of what the company is not doing right. Wonderful. Mara, it has been a real pleasure. I encourage the audience to reach out, get connected, find out more about what Mara and her team can do for you. And as always, I hope everyone can stay healthy and safe. They can find meaning and purpose at work each and every day. And I hope you all have a great week. you enjoy the human capital innovations podcast enjoy ad-free listening by going to the patreon page and please consider contributing even at the producer or sponsorship level and please leave a review thank you for your support thanks again for joining us for this episode of the human capital innovations podcast I hope you stay healthy and safe and that you have a great week.